evening, everyone. Thanks for joining tonight's post-game press conference following the 2-1 victory over FC Dallas. The 15 wins on the season ties for the second most by an expansion team. Ties with Atlanta in 2017. We've uh, kicked off with 10 wins, which is uh, one short of uh, Charlotte's record back in 2022. With that, Coach, we'll kick it off with an opening statement followed by questions. Yeah, thanks, John. I think uh, obviously any game plans get thrown out of the window when you get a red card, you know, after 12 minutes. Then it just becomes about grit, detire, determination, and desire, right? So uh, it took us a while to figure things out, to figure out the spacings, and, and credit to Dallas. They really gave us a, a good game. So, you know, Nico has, runs a tight ship there, and he, and he does a great job. And uh, yeah, just excited for the group. Um, come out to half making a bunch of changes, getting attacking guys on the field, getting attacking options through the width and the wings. Um, and I think just, uh, you know, it was a matter of time. We, 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 we certainly bent them uh, to the point of breaking. So, you know, I'm really proud of the boys. Um, we huffed and we puffed and we finally broke them down. So these games are tricky. I've been involved in many of these games and uh, yeah, walked away sometimes with a loss, walked away sometimes with a tie. Um, but again, credit to everyone off the bench, uh, credit to Nukfi, everyone, Anthony, Rasmus had a great game, everyone contributed, chipped in, um, and I thought as a collective you could see, you know, what we stand for and, and the type of goals we score, um, you know, you can walk down the, the aisle of, of doubt uh, when these things happen, we get to court playing slow and, and delays and, and it just catches up with us and to break that mindset mentality, we needed to get in the locker room and just almost reset the brain, the brains and the bodies and, uh, and almost show gaps of where we are with a man up. So credit to the boys for the second half application and performance. Thanks coach, we'll go to questions. First one we'll go to Santiago. Santi, we can't hear you. We're going to go to Tom Timmerman, and then we'll circle back with you. Brett, is this, this kind of game, is it, is it goes on and on? Does it just seem like maybe it's going to be one of those nights where you can't solve? Yeah, you have on? to believe, though. You have to believe, and, and, and sometimes you have to earn and will yourself to the win, right? You have to create a bit of chaos. You have to create a bit of havoc. You have to be brave to play balls in the box. You have to do a couple of things that, you know, Usually you think you've got the extra man, you should play more safe and, and really be strategic and methodical about how you're going to break them down. So sometimes you just have to throw the kitchen sink at them and, and bend the opponent, right? Um, and, and force mistakes and force uh, dangerous uh, crosses and force these types of things. You know, we changed systems. We changed, uh, you know, we put it just about every attacking play we had on the field. Um, so within a system, we threw the kitchen sink at it too, right? So, um, but still without losing our head and, um, yeah, I'm disappointed for the last 30 seconds of the game. Um, but I think you could see that there was a hunger in the boys. I think there was a determination and a desire to get these three points. Um, these three points meant so much to us tonight for the bigger picture, right? We have three more home games left. Um, and we know every home game is vital for us uh, in terms of our quest for glory or quest for playoffs or quest for home birth playoffs. So, you know, we'll just uh, keep on doing what we're doing. Next we'll go to Tom Schwartz. Brad, what did it feel like when you heard the crowd respond to Klaus coming onto the field? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, you can you can sense a sense, uh, you can feel a, a, a bit of confidence within the crowd and a bit of confidence, you know, that, that boosts Klaus to another level, right? So for sure he hasn't got the stamina in his body to last, you know, more than 30 minutes right now. So we're building him up strategically. But you can see when he comes on, he's a handful. He, he, he occupies these center backs. He's, he's savvy with his body. He, he uses his feet well. He brings others into play. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to have everybody on this roster that's getting stronger, healthier, fitter, um, and, and creating a little bit more of, of weapons off the bench. Uh, starting, you know, teams that we, we start with Jared Stroud and Rasmus Alm, just, you know, the workman-like blue collar, you know, and then we can break teams down with the rest of the guys that come off the bench. That, that was today's game plan. Um, and, and I'm happy for everybody as a collective. Um, you mentioned Alm. Can you speak a little more about uh, just ways he impacted the game from your vantage point tonight? Yeah, he's very dangerous in, in the half spaces. He's, he's clean and tight, you know, with his ball control in the pockets. But then he's a big weapon when he's out wide and can get crosses in, right? He's dynamic. He's, he shows a sense of urgency. But he's also a, a, 
uh, yeah, he doesn't fatigue. He just runs all day long and he gets back and does whatever is needed for the team. So um, we had him playing at a, as, as a wing back at the end of the game. We, we, you know, had a five and attacked in a three. So we were a little bit flexible down the wide areas. And that's, you know, we showed intent with Anthony Morcani coming in the game with Rasmus Alm, you know, the different uh, nuances we gave to his game. And I thought he responded ever so well as the jobs as a right center back at times. So, yeah. Hey coach, I wanted to ask about Mark Anik a bit, just because he comes from Colorado in a system where he's you know struggling to find playing time. Then he comes here and has you know, two goal contributions within his first two matches. What have you kind of seen from him that you've liked from him so yeah, far? Yeah, you just look at DNA and profile, right? You look at DNA. He runs. He's got a good technical ability, and he's got shows great urgency and and uh, energy. So. That's all tools that we need to play our system and philosophy. So, you know, when we went through video with him, he was like, yeah, coach, this is who I am. I like this. This excites me. So I think you can see sense of um, enjoyment in his game. I think uh, he brings an added quality to us when we, when we need to break down the opponent. Um, I think he gets in dangerous areas in the final third. And, you know, credit to him. And he wills himself to, you know, I don't know if he was on the goal or, you know, I don't know if he scored or if they gave it an own goal. Not sure yet. Um, but he wills himself to a successful moment. So you only do that with, with confidence, enjoyment, and, and desire. So I, I'm happy for Anthony. Over to Daniel. Coach, kind of, kind of playing off of that, two new faces, two new goal scorers, assuming that it's not an own goal. How important is that for some new faces to, to not only get the goal, but to get the goal at home and kind of build that momentum for them with their new teams? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good for integration of the team. I mean, we... We had an approach at the beginning of the season to to recruit really humble, modest, you know, professional human beings. So uh, obviously the the human beings and and the soccer players we, we we recruited have certain skill sets, right? So that we see certain skill sets so early on with Nurkfi and, and Anthony, it's just credit to everyone in the club making these players feel welcome because yeah, they they have a certain um, skill set that we need, right? Uh, it's not always easy to just hit the ground running. Um, but I think it's the environment we've created. I think we've built a culture around here that's accepting. I think uh, everyone feels they have a chance and, and everyone, you know, when they get the effort, when they get the opportunity, they know that, yeah, anything can happen for them, right? So, um, and these guys are, are hungry. They stay on the field longer. Um, yeah, Nukvi, we have to force him off the field. He takes uh, 13 shots every single day after training. And sometimes we're like, Nukvi, it's a little bit too much today, you know? Um, so yeah, credit to these guys to be open, to willing to learn for new, uh, for new principles, uh, for new tactical profiles, and, and little nuances about the game that they might have not known. So, yeah, it's an, it's an enjoyment to show that, once again, the collective wins in our, in our system. Confirm, Anthony, did you get the first goal? Tomorrow? And you always talk about the newness. There's a lot of newness. There's always a different starting lineup. But to your point, you found a lot of leaders and you found a lot of confidence in this group. So can you speak to the fact that a lot of these guys, even when it's their first shot, they are continuing to show up and be leaders no matter how old they are? Yeah, we don't want to create a system of you have to, right? We want to create a system that of expression within a system, within a profile, right? Within a tactical philosophy. And, and I think through the culture of what we've done, whether it's been team building, whether it's been off the field uh, uh, discussions, uh, breakout sessions, or, you know, just on the field principles and, and discipline of what we're trying to do and show conviction and belief. So we've just created uh, a will and, and a belief to want to achieve the next level, right? Um, We've created uh, some of some of maybe people sitting in the room have helped us create that edge as well because we wanted to prove people wrong. So this is another way of belief, right? So Anthony joins us, not getting minutes. He wants to show that he can. Nukvi, he wants to show that he can. So we've created an environment that, yeah, we want to express ourselves. We're all different artists. We're all driven by ego. But how can we just, you know, inject that into something positive for the group? And uh, yeah, again. We, we, we don't believe we're anything special. We just believe that, you know, we stick to our way. Uh, Coach, obviously Dallas has a very stingy defense, one of the, you know, lowest goals allowed in all of MLS, and especially after the red card early on. Just talk about, you know, breaking them down and, you know, breaking down that, you know, big block that Dallas had in front of their goal. Yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the things that, you know, obviously – 
pressing teams have always had problems breaking down teams, right? And, and I've been part of teams that struggled uh, to break down, you know, eight versus 10 outfield players and, and we go and tie the game a couple of years back. So I know how difficult it can be, right? And it's one break away the other way and we're a goal down. So, you know, we don't want to be reckless. We don't want to be random with our intentions. And for us to, to strategically, without losing patience, <laughs> right, strategically break an opponent down and wear an opponent down. And our way, the players that we train every day, the way we play, the system we play is really tiring, right? It, it, it breaks our players down sometimes, um, just f in terms of training load, right? So um, we just think, accumulatively, what can that do to the opponent, right? So the longer the game goes on, we all had belief that it's just a matter of time until something happens, right? So um, I thought we didn't give much away. Um, and, and again, credit to Dallas. They really are a stingy defense and yeah, we, we lost to them in the first round, you know, in, in, uh, in Dallas over two legs, uh, which was still something crazy, but we knew how hard it was there to break them down as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just proud of my boys. We've got time for two more, if we have any. <coughs> uh, Berkey, yeah, had to make a couple of good saves in tight situations there when they got the ball in close, and that looks like that obviously loomed large yeah. in the game. Roman. Yeah, it's just one moment away, right? It's one moment away. It's one slip from Tim at midfield or, or whatever, right? It's just one moment. Um, and again, yeah, Roman comes up uh, big once or twice, which was massive. You know, I just feel sorry for him for the last goal um, because he doesn't deserve that. He hasn't earned that. Um, but again, we're in good spirits, and, and we know the value of these three points was massive today. Get a little heated on the field there after the game? With, with what? With... Players from teams, you looked like you were upset. With the players? You? No, with, with some, you were upset with somebody. Possibly a Dallas assistant? I don't know. Oh, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so, I mean, when we scored the second goal, um, I celebrate to the home fans, right? Uh, I think one of the assistants took it out of context, and I have a really good relationship with Nico, mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to clarify that with Nico, and Nico understands, he knows me as a person, so, you know, we just cleared it up, and I wanted to be sure that we, we're on, you know, we, we give these guys something nice in the locker room when they arrive, so we respect the opponent, and, you know, for us, it's, it's got nothing to do with anything, throwing anything in anybody's face, so, you know, you, there was just a mis misunderstanding. Uh, Josh Yarrow had a great game in, in the back, especially when it came to shutting down a lot of those long balls that were coming to the defense. You combine that with the game we saw from Akeel Watts playing so far up and in almost a right back role. Can we see more three in back five? Is that something that opens up more possibilities for you guys going forward? Yeah, it does. I mean, we, we were playing a four defensively and then in the first half rolling out Akeel higher, you know, as a, you know, three, four, three, three, four, two, one. Um, so we rolled out different formations, you know, and then, uh, yeah, as the game goes on, you know, they get the red card. So again, we don't need three at the back. We only need two versus one against their strikers. So they defend in a 4-4-1. It gets a lot technical, but yeah, I mean, it does give us options. And sometimes you go through the opponent vertically. Sometimes you have to go around the opponent. So you have to take what the game gives you. And, and uh, we thought for this opponent, that was the game plan, but uh, it changed after 12 minutes. So yeah, then we came a little bit of a frustrating last 30 minutes of that half, but then we recalibrated, recorrected, and got a new new system in place, and then that kicked in, so. Coach, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you.